Hello everyone, in this video we will look at how we can create a caching layer with Redis in a Node.js application and then we are going to test that in Postman. So let's start with the video. Open the terminal and in the terminal we are going to create a new directory or you can say a new project and we will name it as Node.js-Redis-Cache and inside this then we are going to navigate into this project folder and then inside this project we are going to run the command npm init-y to generate package.json file into our project okay and now the next thing that we want to do is we want to install redis into our computer so for that you are going to visit this redis website and then here you are going to select whatever operating system you are on and then you are just going to follow the instruction over here and to install the redis on mac os you should have brew installed on your computer so let's see if i have brew and we can see brew version over here that yes we do have brew and if you don't have brew please install it it's really very simple and the next thing that you have to do is you have to install the redis by running the command brew install redis into the terminal you can navigate out of this project anywhere that you want okay and then run the command brew install redis i already have redis installed on my computer and that's why i'm not going to hit enter now but you have to hit enter and it might take you a few moments and then open the vs code open the project into the vs code and here we are going to create two files and name it as index.js which is going to be entry point for our server okay and then we will have another file which is going to be .env and now we want to install all the dependencies that we need so for that you have to open the terminal and in the terminal run the command npm i and then we need axios we need express we need nodemon redis and a dot env and then let's hit enter now let's open the index.js file and into the index.js file we are going to start off by bringing all of the code that we need so in the index.js file we start off by importing all of the dependencies or libraries that we need so in the index.js file we start off by importing express for creating a server then we create an instance of our express application and we ask app to pass the incoming request body it is a middleware which is going to pass incoming request we also bring in axios for making http request then we load the environment variables from the env file using the env package also we bring in the create client from redis to connect to the redis server and now the next thing we will do is we will initialize a redis client we start off by creating a variable named initialize redis client which is going to be an asynchronous function and inside this function we are going to set up and connect to our redis server Redis server by default starts on the port 6379. So in the .env file, we are going to have a variable named Redis URI, which is going to start the Redis server on 6379 port. So let's save this file. And back here, we are calling this Redis URL on the port 6379. And after this, we are going to check if a Redis server URL is provided. And if it is provided, we are going to proceed with creating the Redis client. So to do that, we create a Redis client using the create client method provided by the Redis. And after it, we pass the Redis server URL as a parameter to the create client function. And then we try to establish a connection to the Redis server using the Redis client.connect. And if the connection was successful, we are just going to log a message which is going to say connected to Redis successfully. And if any error occurs during the connection process, we are going to catch it and we are going to throw a message which is going to say fail to create the Redis client with whatever the error will be. And we are just consoling log the error. And if any error occurs like the Redis is not connecting to the server, we are going to throw an error which is going to say connection to the Redis failed with whatever the error will be. This initialized Redis client is basically used for caching the data that is going to be retrieved from the external API that we are going to use. Next, we are going to have a cache object. This object is going to contain three methods, get, set and delete which are used to get set and delete the data from our redis cache 
here basically we are using the redis client object to interact with the redis database the get method is basically going to retrieve the data from the cache it is going to be based on the provided key and it is using redis client dot get to fetch the data associated with the given key from the redis cache and if there exists a data with this given key we are going to return it but we are going to return it after passing it into the json format using json.parse and if there is no data we are just going to return null then we will have a set method which is going to set data into the cache and this set method is going to take the three parameters which is key value and expiry which is set to 60 and this 60 means 60 second we can also increase this okay and then it is going to use this redis.client.set method which is going to take another four parameters key value x and expiry and before we can store the value we are going to convert it to a json string using json.stringify ex is the expiry time in seconds okay then we are going to have the delete method which is going to delete the data from the cache based on the provided key okay it is also using redis client.delete to delete the data that is associated with whatever the key is. Now we will set up our express server. For that we are going to have an asynchronous function initialize express server. This is going to first this is going to first call in the initialize redis client function to connect to the redis server before we can continue. Then we are setting up our express server with a single get route at comments forward slash comments. This route essentially is going to listen for get request at the comments endpoint. And when the request is going to be made to this endpoint, the callback function is going to be executed. Inside this asynchronous function, which is going to take two parameters, request and response, we are going to have try and catch block. And inside this try statement, we are retrieving the cache data using cache.get. And if in the cache we have a cache data, we are just going to return that. Otherwise, we are just going to make a request to the external API, which is JSON placeholder to fetch the comment. Now, instead of comments, you can fetch any data that you want to use, like users, post, anything. So for that, we are going to head over to this website, which is JSON placeholder. This JSON placeholder, it is a fake and reliable API, which can be used for testing. Okay. And when you scroll down over here, these are all the endpoints that they offer and grab any endpoint that you might want to use and then back to the vs code here you have to provide that endpoint suppose you want to use post so you are going to provide forward slash post and inside this you are going to say post and then over here we will say post just like this and then it is going to make request to the post endpoint and then over here also you are going to turn it into the post okay and we are sending this request using xuse okay and once we have received the response, we are going to extract the data from that response object. And then we are going to store it into this data variable. Also, we cache the data using cache.set. Okay. And then finally, we send the data as a response to the client. And if we get any error during fetching the data, we are going to send a status of 500 with a message error fetching the data from API. Okay. And after we have defined the route, we need to specify the port on which our express server will listen for incoming request. And for it, we are going to call this listen method on our app object, which in turn will start the server. And then finally, at last, we call the initialize express server function to start our express server. And if any error occurs during the server initialization process, it is going to be caught and docked to the console. And that's all for this index.js file. Now we are going to test it on the Postman. Before that, we are going to start the server. And one thing we forgot that in the package.json file, we are going to have a script which is going to be start. And it is going to start the node mod with our index.js file. And let's save this. And now we are going to start the Redis server and also our express application. So for that, first we are going to run the command redis dash server to start the redis server and you can see that it is ready to accept the connection tcps okay and then in another terminal start the express server by running the command npm start 
and you can see that we got the message it is connected to the redis successfully and the server is also running on the localhost 3000 that means we can test the application on the postman but before moving further by testing the application on the postman we have something to do that is we are going to initialize the redis cli and in the terminal run this command and then let's hit enter and you will see that the redis server has started on the port 6379 amazing isn't it and to make sure that the server is listening to our request we are going to send in this ping and if it returns the pong that means the redis server is working perfectly now we are going to open the postman and test our endpoint and then in the postman select this get and here we are going to enter the url that is a server is listening on 3000 and we are fetching the post from the json placeholder and then when we hit enter you can see that it does give us the response okay here we have the user id id title you can see that it took us 532 milliseconds to fetch the data from the api correct and now when we again hit send you are going to see that the time reduced dramatically to 10 milliseconds so what happened basically over here is when we first make the request to this endpoint it fetched the data from the external api that is json placeholder api okay but after fetching the data from that external api what redis did is it stored that data into its cache and then when we hit send for the second time it gave us the data from the cache and not from the external api and now when we go back to this redis server here we are going to type in one command that is db size and you will see that it shows us the one okay and if we want to empty the database we are going to run the command db flush okay and then let's hit enter oops sorry it's not db flush but it is flush db okay and there we get the response okay and now when you look for the db size it is going to show you zero let's make the request one more time now this data is not in the cache as you see here we have zero over here and then let's hit send you see it took us 447 milliseconds okay then when we are going to hit the send for another time it just takes 7 milliseconds and then we head back to the terminal and run the command db size we are going to have one and that's it for this video i hope you found this video or tutorial helpful and if you did that please do not forget to like and also subscribe and if you want to read its documentation the link for it is given into the description and for the github repository the link is also given into the description so i'll see you in the next one till then bye bye and take care